Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Cinefix Top 100, the forest whose spirit will regrow with the strength of 100 of the greatest movies of all time. I'm Clint Gage, and joining me as always, Cinefix's resident Nightwalker, Alex Stedman. Alex, how you doing? I'm good. It's nice to see you with eyes unclouded by hate. Oh, good. Yeah, that's how I like to be seen most of the time. Um, This week, being voiced by Billy Bob Thornton, Michael Calibro. Cal, what's up, dude? Nothing, man. I got this great letter from the emperor, which basically lets me do anything I want. That's That's how it works. That's how it works, right? So long as the emperor ends up getting to be immortal, I think we'll all be fine. Um, But uh, if those context clues weren't enough for you, uh, I'm going to continue to not talk about what movie that we're going to watch this week. I'm going to leave that bit of suspense hanging. Um, but just to remind, we are welcome back to, uh, the top 100. We're continuing our journey through season two, the community season, uh, which was Dan's algorithms idea after becoming self-aware, of course. But just a reminder, we do have the ability to fight back. We can sort of John Connor our way into a rebellion of sorts. If we, uh, as a community unanimously decide to give a movie the boot, we can, and I'll bet we've got a handy dandy envelope somewhere there. You guys got envelopes right there in front of you? We got two. Oh, great. Oh, that's right. Got two envelopes. Should we decide to boot the movie that we discussed today, we can open those envelopes and replace it with one of the movies we find in there. But before we do that, let's talk about a movie today. So this week we're talking about finally some proper animation, Princess Mononoke. Our first guys, fully ha- newly animated film. Yeah, what do you exactly. Mean newly animated? Completely made from scratch. <laughs> uh, no shade to Robin Hood, but they reused a few scenes in there. No, I'll throw shade at Robin yeah, Hood. Yeah, no, but they that, should. That's fine. Listen, that's they were I... on a budget, all right, and uh, they, you know, they put the money where account. You know, they got some. They got. They didn't recycle songs, all right. The, you know. <laughs> The bars. On no, the just, bar, just the bard. The, just just get, the dance moves to those songs. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, listen, we recycle uh, dance listen, moves if every you, week. If, <laughs> that's yeah. Cool if you me. haven't watched the Robin Hood episode, go back and watch the Robin I mean, Hood. It's going to be referenced about yeah, yeah. them about them reusing animation a bunch. But that is not a thing that, as far as I can tell, Hayao Miyazaki did here that's, in Princess Mononoke. Yeah, that's because they cheated uh, with computers. This, Barely. There is not a lot of CG no, in this listen, movie. We, we can talk about it, but they, they we can. Most- We'll t- we will talk about it. That's one of the things that I feel like to talk about is this movie occupies a really a really interesting spot where where computer animation is concerned. But but Princess Mononoke, one of one of Hayao Miyazaki's many incredible movies. Uh, it follows the battle between these ancient forest gods and the people of Iron Town, and we're using up all the forest resources, all of that good stuff. Came out in 1997. Um, but what is, what is your, you guys relationship with this movie? Is this one that you've had with you since, since you were a kid, Alex? Uh, Miyazaki is a really interesting director for me because I really feel like when I think about my history of movie watching without me knowing he was probably the first director that I was like, Ooh, I like this one without realizing what I was doing. You know what I mean? Because the first, my first Miyazaki was Kiki's delivery service. Uh, and then My Neighbor Totoro. And then I think I watched Spirited Away too young, like kind of when it came out. <laughs> um, it's it, Which is great. But yeah, I, was, I didn't understand it, but I knew it looked cool. Um, and then I... I movies, movies that you watch too young are like proper formative oh, experiences. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I, you have to, as a parent, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for which movie should I show my kids when they're too young? <laughs> no, that, could go, that could go two ways, Clint. <laughs> I know it could, it could go I, even the ones that go badly, like they go badly in memorable ways. So, yeah. Uh, but no, Mononoke was one I came to later. I think once I realized what I was doing with Miyazaki and I was like, oh, I have a director that I like. This is fun and exciting. Then I came to Princess Mononoke. So it was not my introduction. I don't I think it would be a weird introduction if this was your first Miyazaki. Um, but I'll just yeah. I'll I'll say it. I'll, I won't be. It's my favorite Miyazaki. Like it's not my only Miyazaki on the list, but. It is okay. I do love this one. Love All right. Well, don't don't tip the the hand I know, too much I always, on where, I always where you got it ranked. We got I, like, we have to save some. For the show. Yeah, I've already deep teased the fact that we might give this movie the boot later. Uh, so we we can't have no, too many. No, we won't. So. Um, Cal, did you have you? This is my this, this 
You ever one, seen this for, movie for before? Once I'm in the spot where this is the first time I've ever watched this movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Uh, okay. This? No. Wait, this, that's really exciting. Is it, though? Because I don't seem that excited. I'm, wait, just, wait, I'm just putting that out there. You didn't like it? <laughs> I don't hate it, but no, I didn't love it. I have like paused a lot. I was on my phone a lot. It's okay. Well, that's your fault. No, it's not. It, like I, 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 I make a sincere. Effort. <laughs> you had time set aside I, yeah, to watch I make it, a to dedicate a time, I make a and sincere... it didn't hold you. No, it didn't. Especially for like the first forty mm. minutes. I will say though, once, once San right is that her name? Yeah. Right. Once she yeah. attacks the like the uh, Iron 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 Town at night, that was when I started to get really into it. But before then, man, it was. The it was, animation, it was a, the, the, the worm. Est- establishing shots were beautiful. That that scene that you're talking about with the worms and the boar, that's like five minutes. And you know what? I wasn't on my phone for that five minutes. But then the like 15 minutes of exposition that came <laughs> after that. Eh. Oh, my eyes are clouded by hate. Uh, there you go. There you go. Um, but that's crazy, though. This yeah, is the first one that you've watched for the first because I've had a few of those. Well, I've watched. Yeah, no, this is the first. This is the first one I've watched for like the first time. Well, are, what's your, your what's your history with Miyazaki then? Is you- not not much, honestly. Really? Yeah, I like I've, I've I've seen like my neighbor Totoro and like Spirited Away. And did he do? Did he do Grave of the Fireflies? No, no, no. And those are the only two of his I've seen. <laughs> it was just those two. Got it. <laughs> I, I good. Oh, yeah, I've also seen yeah. The Wind Rises. This, I forgot about that. That was fun too. Yeah. But yeah. good yeah. Oppenheimer viewing. Yeah. That is a nice pairing. Mm-hmm. But that's it. Um No, I'm I'm actually in, weirdly this week on an unrelated note, uh I did start my kids on Miyazaki just like last week. So we started with Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, and they loved that. So then they immediately wanted to watch Ponyo after that. So we watched Ponyo, and they loved that. And then they immediately wanted to watch another one. So we watched My Neighbor Totoro, and they loved that. And then I was like, should we watch Princess Mononoke? And, I, and this is where I actually did pause. I was like, I don't think they're ready for this one yet. <laughs> because it is, it is goopy and bloody. And but I mean, I think my, my older, my daughter's nine right now. Do you not explain to your daughter that like this is the season of community and that we need to talk about how, uh, no. what's her name? Uh, in e- 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 Eboshi? Abo- Eboshi. Eboshi managed to create a community out of prostitutes and lepers. I, that to forge a, mm-hmm. to to forge pun intended a uh, very prosperous I, like iron ore community you know uh, no I didn't explain that to my nine year old movie and she's I, the best character yeah. by the way oh no I love Aboshi we'll talk a lot about her uh, oh yeah 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 see, I think we I want to talk about characters and and their general ranking of interesting uh quite a bit honestly because that's that's one of the one of my big takeaways from this movie um revisiting it now but um but no i did i did want to i was like should i make them watch princess mononoke with me as i prep for this episode uh and i decided against it um i think you know i'd like to think because i don't want to make it about work all the time (laughs) my my relationship with my kids has become about work well, there, um, there are definitely levels of Miyazaki because, like, like I said, and kind of, I started almost the same way that your kids did with like my neighbor Totoro, Kinko, Kiki's delivery service. So you yeah, have yeah. those like kind of more like kid friendly ones, and I think um, what's the one with the Porco Rossi? That one's more of like a, a Porco rollicking. Rosso. Yeah, yeah, yeah Rosso. Yeah, uh, yeah, that one's more of like a rollicking adventure, and then you kind of have the tier of like Mononoke, Spirited Away. Well, what's What's interesting about this movie too is that like it is at the dead center of his filmography. Now that he did, he did, added one more last year with the boy and the heron. Um, it, it is there's a couple that he only wrote mixed in there uh, on either side of Mononoke, but there's seven movies that he made prior to Mononoke and seven that he's made since. So like Princess Mononoke is the dead center of his filmography, which I think is is an interesting thing to think about in terms of like where it you know, how you, what sort of Miyazaki fan you are. I, it, the, Mononoke is not the Miyazaki that I go back to, uh, right? Like if I ever revisit him, I'm, I'm a spirited away in Howl's Moving Castle guy. Um, less, less so about uh, Mononoke, but anyway, I just think is it, it's the, the fact that it is like, do we think it's at like the tip of the pyramid in, in the sense that it's the dead center of his filmography? Not his best. I, 
I, it's my favorite. But the thing about Miyazaki is you can talk to a million like film fans and get a different favorite Miyazaki um, for yeah. the same reasons you were just saying. I, I think it's his most, I think it's arguably his most dense, his most, I think it might be, is it mo- it's not his most expensive, I don't think, but I think it's among his most ambitious, both like filmically. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was, I think it, yeah, I think it was a pretty big one. I know um, it spent around a year being the highest grossing movie in the history of Until Japan. Until Spirited right? Away. Like it took made it. a ton of money. Well, it, with Jap- Japanese film in particular, but the, you know, in terms of Japanese box office, apparently E.T. was had held the record since uh, 82 or whenever that came out. And then Titanic came out like less than a year later and beat it again. But um, was Princess Mononoke dethroned uh um et et well i do th- i do think it was japanese box office it away then dethroned <laughs> titanic in it might have yeah in the japanese box office that is yeah if um yeah it was about a 20 million dollar movie uh Which is when you convert the yen to the yeah pretty darn 36 by 36 million by today's standards i'm being i'm being told via slack from somebody the algorithm is talking to me um i think it is though i to the point of him it being in the middle i think it encapsulates a lot of miyazaki like themes really well particularly that whole the world is cursed let's try to find love in it you could find that in almost every miyazaki film but i would argue that is what mononoke is primarily about like the world is full of hate and we all have hate in us you just have to fight to find the love that's like what the whole character is yeah, I mean, you know, and I think too that it's to me, and and I think the reason that I don't go back to it as much is I feel like this is is kind of the most on the nose Miyazaki, like because like as to your point, it's got all the things that he's known for in there, you know, everything he said, you know, and nature and our relationship with it and our dynamic uh, that we that we exist with in the world and um, you know how we're supposed to handle that. Um, you know, it's it's got everything he's known for, but in an on the nose sort of way that I don't think is present in some of his other stuff. You know, which I think is interesting too because I, I did I, I read a thing where where James Cameron said it was very influential for him on on Avatar, which is also that a so much sense. visually stunning, but admittedly super on the nose thematically kind of movie. So it, it makes a lot of sense. The fact. Yeah, the fact that he was like, yeah, I'm inspired by Princess Mononoke to make Avatar. I'm like, that makes total sense. And it also it explains why I never really go back to Princess Mononoke. Or Avatar for that. Because it, it is, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous film. I love the animation in this in this movie. The problem I think with this movie as I see it is I think it has a when you really dissect the themes and like what is at play and like the conflict there, that stuff's pretty interesting. The um animation is utterly gorgeous. Just like the way that yeah. they use establishing shots and the map paintings and stuff like that. Like that stuff is beautiful. Having said all of that, these characters are so on the nose boring that I just, I, I can't, I can't do it. This, like, this is- I don't know that they're all that way. I, I mean, yeah, you're right. There is a- uh, Well, I tell you, I tell you what, I tell you what, before we get it, before we get into uh, I'm about anything- about to turn it into a demon. There's a, there's a, there's a Boshi who is excellent. She's fantastic. Bef- San, San is complex. Chu is complex. Ashitaka is- San, like a- Listen- I, I, I mean, I the will, fact that, I, that I'll go, I'll go with you. My, my weighing into this debate is going to be that I think Ashitaka is the like lamest, hands lame, down, least interesting yeah, part of this movie. He's, <laughs> but I love. He's but the fuck. before we get, before we get too far into it, hang on a second, hang on. Before we get too far into it, let's just go ahead and officially transition into our brilliant moments thing. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned there, Cal, about um about the animation and some of those establishing shots, which, which that is also, we also teased a little bit about the CGI in this movie. Yeah. Um, and what I think it does, this film is sitting at an interesting point in the history of CGI, particularly where animation is concerned, because he did use a fair amount of it, but just to sweeten, right? Like nothing was created whole cloth with CGI. So they used it to like sweeten transitions and things like that. I mean, um, and so those, 
those paintings, those matte paintings and, and those things that you see in the movie that, that there's one, I remember the, the first time in particular that, um, they come up over the hill and, and we see Iron Town for the first time. Those giant wide shots uh, that look like they're on a long, I, I describe it as a long lens, right? Like it's, there's these giant wide shots of the town next to the lake, mountains in the background, sunlight coming through the smoke. Like it is gorgeous. Like that series of shots when he's got the, he's got the injured guys, they've just come through the forest. Um, and we see Iron Town for the first time. Like those are those are moments, and, and there are a handful of moments like that in this movie. But there are moments where you just kind of stop and you think, like that is a that's a painting. Put that in a museum. Yeah, but that's like what's so great about those, right? Is that like what what I appreciate about um, these Miyazaki films and stuff like that is how they take like all of the animation lessons from Disney, and then they just make like they just make them ruthlessly like Japanese efficient, right? So like you have these matte paintings and like these are huge sprawling matte paintings, right? That probably take for like, that probably take a long time to draw and paint. And then it's going to be like a 14 second pan, like pan, like pan across them to have like, you know, the iron town where it's, really the only thing that is animated there is like the billowing of smoke from the furnace and it's just yep. enough motion to make it feel animated and alive but they just spend so much time but like they choose instead to spend the time on developing those frames on like the details of the painting and then try and minimize the motion and then like later in the film when you're um looking at the are they like the the like forest spirits like the little like ghosts the little the little tree spirits. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a name for them, but I, the little dudes. Yeah, the the way that they do like the, the English English dub has them as as tree spirits. Tree spirits. Yeah, so. The way that they have like um different like you know like layers like you know like those when you like look at like long lens shots of like rolling hills. There's like the hill in the foreground, then the hill in the middle, and the hill in the background. Right? They'll have yeah. them in the foreground, really really detailed, but not moving as much. And then two more or less like disconnected layers behind they're just little dots but the little dots will move a lot because they're a lot easier to when they're like little dots in the background yeah. on the on the on the hill those are easier to animate than the whole complex character in the foreground but like your brain is just like look at how many of these things are in frame and it's yeah. it's it's those kind of like animation efficiencies and like Cheat is the right word, but I don't mean to say that in a way that like they're, I mean to say it cheating, like yeah. what makes good filmmaking is how you fake the thing to get it the way you want it to be. Right. It's like, exactly. All of that makes that animation just like so detailed and so beautiful. It's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's like, a, it's the forced perspective trick of animation, you know, to the point about, you know, using CG to kind of just enhance these kind of matte paintings. I mean, one thing that they constantly use CG for was the the tentacles kind of around uh, Ashitaka's arm. And mm -hmm. in that opening scene, which I, I love with the worm disgusting monster, one of the only real parts of CG is the tentacles are grabbing onto his arm, which is crazy to me because you watch that scene and yeah. you think it must be CG, but a, most of it's hand drawn. whole point of like the cg thing right it's kind of like the metaphor for cgi in the 90s is that it wasn't too powerful but like it's expertly used because whether we're talking about independence day or we're talking about princess mononoke or we're talking about terminator 2 right like yeah. it's well not terminator 2 but the CG not terminator 2. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as we get to the back half of the of the decade the back half of the 90s like there's some legit so like armageddon does not hold up. Does not hold up. Not even a little bit. But like for that yeah. little bit but, where it was powerful enough to sweeten, but not super enough to rely on as the crutch, it was great. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. When people were using it as another tool, it was awesome. Instead when, of the until it became tool. its own thing, it be it gets less so. But but leave it leave it up to a guy like Miyazaki to to use it use it correctly and judiciously, right? Which which I think is is. Uh, one, I mean, on top of the fact that, you know, I mean, because 
it's just like in talking about three amigos and wanting to talk about every scene and just how funny it is in a vacuum you could go through this movie and talk about every shot and how beautiful it is in a vacuum um yeah i struggled in my notes to like not be like this scene is really pretty i like how pretty this scene is yeah exactly Uh, we can just we can just layer a the whole movie is really pretty yeah uh kind of (laughs) even thing you know they put that disclaimer across this entire conversation you know that's uh, actually that's why they choose to bandage the lepers because they didn't want to have anything ugly (laughs) <laughs> is that is that what it was? Yeah, it's not, those weren't medical bandages. Yeah, no, those I, weren't medi- to be fair, I could see a lady of Oshi being like, "No, nah, I can't have like you know, we're gonna bandage you guys up." She, I, yeah, no, I hundred percent think she was like that. Like, listen, we're all equal here as long as you love you guys. However, yeah, as long as you as long as you got your bandages, but, on, we're, we're good. You're right. Don't make anybody else look like you. Um, but keep making rad guns. Um. Okay, so what? Any other brilliant moments you guys want to want to talk about? What else we got? What else we want to talk about? Do we want to just fire up that characters debate again? We seem pretty. I, I, I mean, we could talk about we could talk about minute, the fight but, scenes, right? Like all the battle scenes are incredibly well done. Well, I you know, and they also yeah. they also play into like the heritage that you know we talk about in Seven Samurai, and they are composed and like very aware spatially of like where the action is and stuff like that, and it's just so well done and so well animated that like those are definitely times when you know i yeah put down my phone and i didn't i didn't even have the urge to pick it up they just look so good well i will say just before that too i i think in my notes i have that great opening scene with the with the monster um and then before we get to the fights though i have san's introduction because we've talked a lot on the show i think about great character introductions i don't know if there is a mm-hmm. there's one of my favorites maybe ever is we're introduced to San by her, I think, sucking a bullet out of a wolf. It's so anti... And by the way, the title of the yep. movie is Princess Mononoke, so I could see a lot of people coming into this movie with a different impression of what it is. And it's like, here's your princess sucking a bullet out of a wolf, and she's going to yeah. look at you and spit it out like this is who she is. Yeah, non-verbally. Like, that's, that's how you meet her, is yeah. she's... Just <laughs> sucking venom out of a giant wolf and spitting it into the river. Um, yeah, I, I do think that was one of the knocks on the movie, like at least when it came out in the States, was they were kind of expecting Disney princess type of stuff. Um, and then even, did, does anybody actually refer to her as Mononoke? Once. Like, I, as and a I, name in the movie? And I think that is only in the English version. And I feel like it's yeah. just so they they can be like, we said the thing. The, there's a Princess Mononoke. It's when yeah, say the, quick yeah, say the title. Yeah, it's it's when um, uh, Ashitaka and Iboshi are having that co- their like conversation, kind of a little bit after this. And she says yeah. like Princess Mononoke, and he's like, oh, Princess Mononoke. That was one of the things that I never thought about, thought twice about until watching it again for this for this uh, movie. I was like, wait a minute, who's Princess Mononoke? I think it <laughs> like, is. Well, and so, because I, I, you know, it is her, and it refers to her, and like, because I, I didn't pick it up watching the movie that nobody called her that. That wasn't like her. But I, you know, poking around like Mononoke means like the, the it means either something along the lines of vengeful spirit. Uh, or, you know, so the fact that she was raised by a god, you know, spirit of the woods in, in Moro, um, right? Moro is the, the yeah, mother's yeah. name. Jillian, yeah. a- Gillian Anderson. Um, Jillian Anderson. Yeah. Scully. Um, <laughs> she, uh, so like, and it was, it was kind of a pejorative from what, from what I, you know, it's, it's almost like a, like a slur a little bit and, and depending on the translation. So it's, I mean, it's a really interesting name that they, they don't actively use in, in the, it's just kind of a metaphor that's there on the poster. So I got to, to, to a certain extent, I got to ask, are you guys sub or dub? So it depends for me. Uh, I always just go with the, the voice cast that I like better um, I have listened or I have watched the the sub, the Japanese language version of Princess Mononoke. Maybe this is a hot take. It, it, it It's at least hot with the people that I've said it to. I really like the English dub of I mean, this. I really like it. Two things I want to say about the English. I, yeah. I, did you watch it? Knowing, watch knowing it what it might say about me, I, I'm, I'm a dub guy. So, I don't know if that makes me lazy or basic or whatever, but like it's, it's, it's just... Yeah. It's just the way that I find it easiest to engage with the movie. And I, I think there, I understand that there are some bad ones, um, but you know, I'm just, 
I mean, I'm, I'm a dub guy. Listen, I get it. I started trying to be a snob about it. So I started with the sub version. And then yeah. I just started pausing my phone. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And it's just like, I'm going back. To, I'm, I'm going to the dub. And then like, I listen, st- like, I'm listen. never going to argue with, with sitting there with Billy Crudup, you know, I it's, will. it's a good cast. Crud, Crudup, <laughs> Crudup's kind of lame here. You know, he's, he's, we, well, well, I, I blame I blame Ashitaka, but you did just segue nicely into which characters are actually interesting. In this movie. I was going to say like Mini Driver as Eboshi, like oh, this is like peak, yeah. like at right after, right or the, right around, if not before. Goodwill Hunting yeah, was would have been what, the 96? year before ninety five, ninety six, yeah. somewhere like that. Yeah, her evil laugh when she's talking to Ashitaka when she just is like laughing at him like he's a tiny juvenile child is. So so oh, perfect. I love her. As, yeah. Uh, you tiny little boy. You tiny little boy. You have not experienced the world yet. Also, like, Keith David I, no, is in it, here, yeah. too. Like, I kind of forgot about that, but yeah. he is. He's the boar. Right? You know, he's and that, the that is one difference, because I, I did poke around in the in the uh, the Japanese version a little bit, and that is the immediately, right out of the gates, the Japanese version doesn't have any narration up front. Yes, which I, I mean, think is a Disney. Keith David yeah. is, like, ex- yeah, it's oh, that's that's a, a Western audience thing. Up front, because I again. Oh yeah, because you Keith David talks about it was a time of demons and forest spirit or something like that. Um, but that whole that opening sequence where you see you know the demon kind of walking through the woods um, is narrated by Keith David in the the dub. I, um, I'd want to just like honestly, I just want to listen to Keith David read the phone book. Oh yeah, well, sure. Who among us? Yeah. Uh, I do like though that like the English dubs of Miyazaki movies they are kind of they put effort into them, and they're like there's yeah. a whole genre essentially. Well, you know what? This actually this this cast list actually has a nice smattering of both like actors and then like real talented voice talent. Like John DiMaggio is in this, and so is Tara yeah. Strong. Like, mm-hmm. come on, who's Tara yeah, Strong? They, they Bender, we got Bender and. Uh, uh, Ahsoka, right? Is she? Is she? No, that's a. No, that's. Why, why do uh, I know? Ashley her strong's a lot of things. She's Harley Quinn. Um, that's it. Yeah. I'm thinking of Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, an original voice of Harley Quinn, by the way. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. no, no. She didn't do it in Batman the Animated. Well, the- no, that was she just died recently. <laughs> Uh, Arlene Sorkin was the original voice. That's it. Yeah. So she's the modern. She's go. the mar- modern Harley Quinn. She's the she's the Harley Quinn. A lot of people know. She's a Harley Quinn. She is yes. a Harley Quinn. Because also, Kaylee Cuoco is Harley Quinn on Harley Quinn. She's good at it, and I like. It. Yeah, I recognize. Oh, listen, we're getting way off. <laughs> but it's like animation. I reckon. We're I reckon. yeah. We started. It's all animation. Uh, we're good. The point here is, is yes, Miyazaki's English dubs always get a good a good cast, and I do think that they're always mixed with like proper voice actors uh, and then names, right? Like. You know, Christian Bale is Howell and, mm-hmm. you know, all of, all of that. So, like, you know, um, he also got a good translator. You know who wrote, you know, who wrote the English language? English. Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Like, Neil Gaiman. Little known, yeah. little known translator, Neil Gaiman. Yeah. You know. You're right. What did he do again? But <laughs> Just a couple things. <laughs> what do you guys think? That. Actually, while we're on the subject, what do you guys think of Billy Bob in this? Because I know a lot of people don't love him. I, I, had I, a, I agree. I think he sounds out of place. No, I, so I hear that. And I do hear Billy Bob Thornton every time he talks, but it works for me. <laughs> they are really something. They'll fight forest gods or samurai. It doesn't matter to them. Like, I, mean, I kind of weirdly trust him, yeah. even though I know I shouldn't, just because I think it's Billy Bob Thornton. I don't know why you would trust this guy. I know. It's stupid. But I like him. That's why I like I, I think that No, I, I I think he's good. I, I think I think later we can talk about recasting his his character, uh, Jigo. Um I can I can imagine we'll have some ideas about who might be able to play uh, that particular role. Uh, whoever, um, whoever. I, could I didn't it be? I didn't mind him. He just I do I remember watching it for the first time, thinking like Jesus, is that Billy Bob Thornton? Yeah. Um, See what they should have done, is and, it, should... and it takes it took me out of it for uh, just yeah. a second. But he yeah. definitely. I think we talked about the Chris Pratt Award in our Robin Hood episode. He definitely gets the Chris Pratt Award. Uh, but I don't mean that derogatory this time i, I don't think. know what, what he's not it, really doing a voice what happens if we got what, what, what happens if we got dustin hoffman to do like his rat so there I, i'm not against it uh <laughs> just yeah just a strong new york the, accent just be the original got, the original japanese version i think is more in that ballpark yeah. than billy bob thornton yes there's a place high in the mountains far to the west of here 
It's where the spirit of the forest dwells, and it's a very dangerous place for humans. Let's have this conversation. We danced around it in terms of like who's who's an interesting character because we talked about Lady Eboshi, and yes, she has the people of Iron Town. I think are are is kind of one of the most interesting parts of this movie mm-hmm. to me because like they're not they're not bad people, and no. by the end you're like rooting for them to survive, like yeah. because they're sort of framed as the antagonist for for a hot minute. Um, and then right. they're getting attacked by another band of samurai, another warlord. And then you want the, and by then you like really care about like the women in Irontown are incredible. Like I love, Oh my God. Uh, the, you know, they came, they all came from brothels. Is that lady Eboshi bought out yeah. all of their contracts? They're all former, like now they're yeah, just prostitutes basically. Yeah. Now they're working, uh, you know, they're working in an iron forge, the, the forge. Yeah. Well, and, um, I, and they're hilarious. And, you know, I also like I think, to, they're, I think they're great. I also like to like, you know, they make they very much draw clear allusions to like the for like the forge is like the beating heart of the city. So it's like you need to protect that at all costs. And it can't it can't stop. You know, like, again, I like all of those yeah. like illusions. And, you know, I think that those characters are interesting. I just I just think that like the main characters outside of Lady Eboshi, who is excellent and frankly they should have just wrote this entire movie around her like this poor woman who is not a small part part for what it's worth she's not but like it's she's not the main part i'm gonna no, i'm gonna i'm gonna defend not. i'm I, gonna defend prince ashitaka real quick because i i know you guys don't love him here's my and by the way because we talked a little bit about the name i believe that miyazaki wanted the name to be like the legend of, of prince the legend ashitaka of ashitaka or, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah. Here is why I like Ashitaka, because there's something special about a character that says everything that jumps into his brain exactly how he thinks it. So, yes, there are noble parts to that. But then you get that scene with him and San where he just blurts out, you're pretty like he has no qualms yeah. about it. But, <laughs> right. like, and, and he's in. And so you have and I think he's a perfect foil to San and Iboshi, who are each fighting for their uh, community is the theme of the season. Okay. Uh, but mm-hmm. he is not on anyone's side. I think the movie needs him to just be a neutral party only on the side of peace. Yeah, but that is my defense of Prince Ashitaka. Listen, you could be neutral, but, you know, not boring. I mean, it is. I don't think he's it, boring. I think he's it is, funny. It is. Well, I don't think he's funny at all. I th- oh, my God. When he, at the end of the movie, when he's when he has this whole monologue that he says, sends to Lady Eboshi and then runs when he's finished, that's hilarious. He just runs away when he's finished talking. I do. Yeah. He he does that a handful of times yeah. where he's, he's just like, like I have to go do this other thing. Yeah. Are you okay? Okay, great. I'll see you later. Bye. And then he like he just takes runs off away. Running. I like he's got that warrior monk thing that is just so like inherently flat Dang. right yeah. like i don't i think i think eboshi has real conflict in her and i think san does as well like they have real conflict that they and they there's growth and they overcome things and they learn and they change and all of that stuff not that every character has to have some massive you know uh, journey in every movie like in the i think you're absolutely right and that the point of ashitake is to represent that the piece that but also like that's it's he's he's not an engaging person and he doesn't seem like he really like a real person in that way which is maybe part of the point too that if, like if, how much credit do you want to give me as i can be like i'm gonna put this dude that d- cannot possibly exist as the 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 metaphor for peace between human nature and actual nature <laughs> like there there might be a wonderful little like trolling kind of like yeah no i made him boring on purpose yeah, because he doesn't exist boring but i, boring I don't peace. i the one thing that i do really like about uh, <laughs> about ashitaka and i think it's just the moments where i think his character is funny is how he keeps telling people like don't make me kill you mm-hmm. like stop it that's like, not he, funny he does that first is that, what, is, but that, is that really, is that really, I don't I think, think it's, I don't, it's not him. It's not him being a comedian. Like it's not him trying to be funny or like cracking jokes. I think watching it was funny to me because like, it, and we just, you know, the, the first batch of samurai that he runs into shortly after he leaves his village and like that first, which we haven't really, we, we started to talk about the action a little bit, but the violence in this movie comes swiftly and unexpectedly. Oh, it and takes like, you and off And it gone. starts for me. It starts like when he's riding the horse and he 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 shoots an arrow and just chops that dude's arms off and you're like whoa 
Like what the hell? And then like two, two beats later, he, he pops a guy's head completely off. Like, um, but he's like, Hey, stop it. Don't, I don't want to do this. And then he does it. And then he just keeps writing. <laughs> like, well, he does, he does do that a few of a, times. Kind too. of a goofy, goofy thing. Yeah. You know, he does it a couple, he does it later with the samurais, you know, closer to the end where he's like, I'm just trying to go warn Eboshi about something. Leave me alone. And they're like, then they don't. And so he kills them all. Um, I did see a take somewhere but I do think I, I, like where he is possibly on the spectrum, which kind of makes me feel like, oh, autistic prince, prince, yeah, like Ashitaka. I, mean, I, I can see you know, that. Stuff, I don't stuff know if that like was that Miyazaki's intention, but I, I I think stuff like yeah, in, whether it was intention or not, I think stuff like that is is to me it always speaks to what movies are for in general. And if like people, you know, if people see themselves, whoever they happen to be, in a character, like great, that's a success. God, like I mean, you know, so can we get a little more wit out of this guy? I mean, like listen, we have been shitting on, or you, let me be clear, speak for yourself. You two, I've no- <laughs> you two have been shitting on Robin Hood. <laughs> All in the beginning of this episode, but at least that fucking hot fox had some personality going for him. There's plenty of what, 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 what are the children calling it now? Riz? Yeah, that's what Ashitaka is completely missing here. And you know, maybe maybe if Peace just had a little more charisma, you know, uh, the, as the a world woman, would be a better place. I think he's got plenty of very. Oh my god, we. Oh my I would have. Women were losing their minds over. I would have made very so, straightforward, Riz. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I would have. You know what you're getting. <laughs> I would have been making yeah. fun of that guy so hard in college, and he may have been popular. He may have been more popular than me, but that didn't make him, you know, interesting. Well, he was. I don't. He was just hot <laughs> and boring. All right. And He's like, not trying. To we all can't up, be. Buddy. We all can't be hot. But damn it, we could at least try to not be boring. <laughs> I, I do not. Can think, I, can I? Yeah, go ahead. I, I do, I do understand him being attractive to, uh, you know, to the women of Irontown. I get it. I, well, they're, they're, they're surrounded. I do. Leopard, I will say Clint. the most, I mean, Jesus the Christ. Mo- I know. Right. Right. The, um, <laughs> I will say that the, the most interesting part, the most engaging part of Ashitaka to me uh, was when he had to leave his village in the beginning. And there's one specific shot too where where the Imishi uh, are all sitting there just sort of bemoaning the fact that they have to send him out to die or whatever. And there's this great panning shot across all these old bearded men, like just all these old beards that are just sitting there like super sad that they're having to send this guy out. And then he just sort of casually cuts off his hair and stands up and leaves. Which by um, the way, like, we had the a most similar scene in, in The most Samurai. engaged... The most engaged I ever was with Ashitaka was was that, and it wasn't even him. Like it was his people that I felt sort of, which we never went back to. Like he says goodbye to his sister, and his sister's all sad to see him go. And then I like I was curious to know about like, you know, did he go back? I guess he wasn't allowed to, because the old lady said, "Well, we're you're dead to us," which is like, pretty oof. harsh. Yeah, that's harsh. He's not actually dead, well, but he'll, anyway. Yeah. But for all my defense, uh, and I do really like that scene, though, I will say, and again, parallel to Seven Samurai, which also has a fun cutting scene, um, very Mm. significant character moment. Uh, But I will say, is he the most interesting character? No, I just I appreciate that he's there. Um, I love the characters of San and Eboshi and how they are essentially in a lot of ways the same character. They're just Mm -hmm. on different sides. Like. Either yeah. uh, either of those characters could be made to make, be the villain, Aboshi especially, because I think when you look at what Aboshi is doing, I mean, she's destroying the earth for her weapons. Like that's supposed to be the villain, right? No, but she's also made a yeah. community of former prostitutes. I don't, and I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, and l- lepers. L- listen, yeah. listen. San is just this little terrorist running around in a town, just murdering people. That's all she does. For what? <laughs> for, for economic. <laughs> literally raised she, by wolves. She's literally oh. just going into towns, murdering people because this town wants to just be economically viable and have sustained growth, so these lepers and ex prostitutes could eat. Hmm. But yeah. from her perspective, they're encroaching on her community. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, every free, every, yeah. like one person's they're, terrorist. But they're, you know, they're a, they're a town full of a town full of terrorists that are just chopping down trees to to strip whoa, mine whoa, ore, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, and not not worried about uh, not worried about the 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 spirits and the creatures that live in the in the forest. So, like, you know, it's all perspective and uh, and happen chance, right? Like, if. 
if Iboshi's parents had left her in yeah. the middle of the woods to be raised by wolves, she would have turned into San. And if San had grown up in whatever circumstance Lady Iboshi did, I assume kind of a, you know. Yeah. And did, did, did she get into her backstory? I assume it's just like hard, no, hard scrabble. Pulled her no, no Iboshi. Bo- Iboshi is a, a, a lady of privilege. So the one thing I know for certain is that like, hold on, I have this, I have this. I mean, I know she is now when we know her, but did, I can't remember now if, she, no, if we no, talk no. about her. I don't. Um, he, so where is it? Where is it? Okay. So here, she seems here, like here things, streetwise so, rose to power. Here, kind of. here are things that me is like, I'm looking at this Polygon article from uh, 2020. Here are things that Miyazaki told uh uh neil gaiman on how to like look at it in order to um you know write the english language script he said don't bother to translate the title it can't be done no contemporary language or modern slang choose good voices the voices are important which you know we've subsequently talked about ashitaka is a prince he's well spoken and formal old-fashioned for his time the Amishi are people that have never made it into modern Japan, wiped out and gone. Lady Eboshi's people are very low class, outcasts, former prostitutes, hustlers, crooks, reformed pimps, lepers. But she is not. She is from a different class. Oh, see, because I, I to what you were Got asking, it. Clint, I don't think they say that in the movie, but that is interesting context. Yeah. yeah. So like even like yeah. even Lady Ebo- like a Lady Eboshi may, you know. I, and I and I think that kind of like plays into her character too, right? Because like she would have been raised in a world that would have given her every opportunity to look down at the people that like she like r- like yeah. raised up and like you know is like a magnanimous ruler of, but like she does not look down on them at all, and she is help. She and is helpful. Every, and yeah, every and everybody everybody in that community loves, loves her. Yeah, like they they love her and very very much appreciate the opportunity that that she affords them. Stay here. Help me kill the forest spirit, Ashitaka. You would do that? Kill the very heart of the forest? Without that ancient god, the animals here would be nothing but dumb beasts once more. When the forest has been cleared and the wolves wiped out, this desolate place will be the richest land in the world. Let's let's skip straight ahead to the ending real quick, which we we haven't talked much about Jigo, who is, uh, you know, Billy Bob Thornton in the English dub. and his whole plot, like the fact, uh, you know, so he's, he's out there trying to cut the head off the forest spirit so that he can sell it to the, uh, yeah, the he's emperor, in it for the yeah. money. He wants to sell it to the emperor because the emperor wants to be immortal. Um, and so he's, he's a hustler and like he, he <clears throat> literally facilitates the decapitation of the forest God, right? <laughs> Like, even though it's Iboshi who pulls the trigger, which is even more telling. Anyway, he's got a great line in, in the English dub that is like, when you're going to kill a god, get somebody else to do your dirty work. Yeah. You know? like, so he's he's a he's a crafty dude. But That's a, some real uh, Iago I, shit right there. The last. Yeah, exactly. The last 30 or 40 minutes of this movie where his plot is sort of all out in the open. And then also the other warlord who's invading iron town and like that plot is out in the open and like everything is starts to hustle with like 40 minutes left in the movie. That's where this movie really picks up for me. But by the time it's over, um, the fact that nobody dies is really interesting. I think like i I was surprised that Iboshi didn't, uh, didn't die tragically in some way. I was very surprised that Jigo doesn't die. Uh, I was fully expecting to, him to to get what was coming to him uh, in the end. Um, the fact that it ends with him just kind of crouched on a rock, going like, "Well, I get, you can't help fools. You win some, you lose some." And like he's he has learned absolutely nothing. So like the energy that that started his plotting with and what led to him killing. A literal god uh it still exists like it's still out there and it's still dangerous and like i think the open-ended nature of this of the ending of this movie is actually really really uh really smart oh i love the ending yeah, of this no. movie the, it's, the ambiguity i i think it's yeah and it, it's again kind of why i love this movie so much and why it is my favorite miyazaki is because there are no evil like straight up evil characters and i mean maybe jing like jigo is like the most uh yeah but like i think the fact that no one dies it's like no we were all just fighting on opposite sides of a war and i think it's kind of implied that maybe they'll have to find a way to work together um especially since yeah iboshi 
uh, uh, Ibushi wants to. Yeah. Um, like she says as much towards the end. Um, you know, after her arm gets bitten off. Um, Very by, sobering. By a yeah, yeah, by a, another decapitated god, and it was Moro's head, right? That bites yep. her. Well, it's arm funny too because they yeah. they foreshadow it earlier during I, I, a scene that we haven't talked about a lot. I think we've alluded to the the big fight scene between uh, San and Eboshi. She says something like, "You can cut off a wolf's head, but it'll still bite." And then later, it bites yeah. her arm off. And then she says, "I told you that wolf literally head bites her arm off." <laughs> Like her immediate response yeah. is to be like, I told you this would happen. <laughs> like, yeah. She kills me. I love her so much. <laughs> That's kind of like what is kind of interesting about this film, right? Is like, I agree. The ending is nice and it's open ending. And this film has such a ro- like robust and like de- deeply complex plot with character motivations. And it's just like, man, I just could not care about any of these characters. Uh, With the exception of Lady Ibushi, yeah. I just so what, want, what do you have I'm, against Son? Not that, nah, not nothing. Because like I don't, I don't think that the film portrays her as as a as a as much of a conflicted character as Lady Ibushi. Like I think, I think it's up to the like, it's more on the audience to realize that she's more of a freedom fighter mm-hmm. role than like yeah. the film itself. You know, really trying to denigrate her for you know trying to protect the forest. Because at the end of the day, like, I get it. You know, it, there's a little bit of, like, the, um, the um, global warming, you know, where we're, us as human beings are destroying the planet. So she kind of gets a little bit of a pass for that of being more, more, like, her violence feels more morally righteous within the context of the film than, say, Lady yeah. Eboshi's, who is literally just doing this to, like, support her people, right? So... I don't think that she is as interesting of a character because I do think that the film in and of itself and the narrative does cut her extra slack that it doesn't cut a Boshi. And that is why I like that character so much is because she is so like, that's why she's the most interesting character to me because she is so conflicted. Yeah. Because she can't like, the film isn't wrong with saying that like deforesting the earth is, is bad, right? But at the same time, like she does, she is trying to provide for her people. So she's just... She's more stuck in the middle than I think San is. And I think that that is a more interesting character point than. No, I, I, I think, yeah, it's, it, giving San, there's a shorthand with, with San, particularly where her motives are concerned. That is, yeah, I mean, like you say, she gets, she gets a pass. Like there's a shorthand to, to the high ground for, for San. Um, I do think that her dynamic with Ashitaka is is what makes her an interesting character like she's able to sort of act i mean she literally baby birds him uh in yeah in the middle it it takes the forest spirit deciding to save his life for her to be like yeah okay i guess he's cool um so i'm gonna chew up beef jerky and spit it into your mouth i think that I was bark that, that's I by the I, way I that think- was in it the most extended baby birding sequence i think in, in film history um but it's uh you know, I mean, the, yeah, the the way that she gets to to sort of automatically live on the high ground, which <clears throat> not necessarily incorrect. Like, I don't I don't mind that really at all. You know, um, but she doesn't have the uh, she doesn't have the tragedy to deal with, or, or like the the difficulty, I guess, in in her decision making that Iboshi, uh, you know, is forced to deal with. So, I mean, uh, so. First of all, I actually agree with you guys that Eboshi is the most interesting character, uh, especially as voiced by Mini Driver. However, my defense of San's complexity is that, first of all, she kind of has uh, that immature aspect on her side. She is much younger, I would say, than Eboshi. Um, but also, if you look at the environmental themes and kind of the link between humans and industry and nature... Ashitaka may be kind of the obvious choice for his kind of being on both sides of the issue. But San is the one who's really kind of embodying nature's anger in a way that she doesn't really know how to process. Um, But also kind of trying to accept that she's human. And it plays really well, I think, in a scene near the end 
where she's just lashing out at, at Ashitaka and saying, you're a human, I hate yep. you. I hate all of you humans. Yes, I'm human, son. And so are you. Stop it, I'm a wolf, you hear? Son. Stay back! And all he does, yeah. my sweet boy, who I will defend until the end, he just, he just takes it and he's like, it's okay. And then he just hugs her. It's okay. Yeah, and I and I agree that she kind of needs Ashitaka for her growth, but that's interesting too. You know, he's like the first human that she's really interacted with, and I think that's a really interesting da- yeah. dynamic. Yeah, I mean, it's the the only, it seems like it's just Ashitaka and then everybody in Iron Town. Those yeah. are the only. She does not like those people. Only, she sees those people as very one yeah. note. But I think Ashitaka is her realizing that like. Oh, humans are complex. I'm complex. Lady Aboshi Oh, look at complex. this. Humans humans don't have to have a personality. I wasn't aware of that at all. It's incredible. <laughs> they can just have Riz, baby. They can just they can just have just straightforward Riz. <laughs> Someone's need, someone, <laughs> someone needs to have it in this movie. Oh, Aboshi has plenty of Riz, okay? He does, I, assure, oh, I, I assure you he does not. <laughs> I'm even, a woman. Even with one arm. He's just hot. Can, like, can we just like separate... Can we just separate? He's also competent. That matters. Okay. But he's not witty. All right. And he's royalty. He's yeah. He's noble. He's got that rad elk. Listen, he's a great red elk. He's hot. He's poisoned. And he's nobility. That's like my kind of man. But what he does. Pets love him. But what he (laughs) does. It's important. But he doesn't crack wise. And, you know, he's just he's just not the funniest guy in a room. You know? I will say another funny yeah. uh, Ashitaka moment is when he's ha- having a conversation with uh, Moro and she says, I, w- like, I wish you would have cried out in your sleep. I would have killed you. And he looks away and says, the forest is beautiful. I love Ashitaka. Yeah, I think this, he's hilarious. This. Like that he is. Did funny. not even hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, we're, gonna, we're talking about just how boring this character is. All right. Robin Hood was <laughs> just such a, a charismatic and attractive fox that he made actual people in real life think animals are sexy and start an entire subculture. And just the way, you know, he goes after Maid Marian, you know, just kind of swarming around in that like stork costume, just shooting the bows and arrows and make yeah, all- in the in the in the exact same way somebody else went strolling at somebody else in the jungle book years before that yeah. you know like yeah. it's you know what clint damn it literally copy and paste his riz is copy and pasted that's right oh my god someone just drew <laughs> him right. slightly more no it was the he's, voice who i defended in that episode Listen, he, that fox is so fucking hot that there is a rooster who has dedicated his life to singing songs about how hot he is i'm sorry ashitaka almost he's saying lots of songs about lots of people that... but listen i no, i don't know that anybody's i think the uh the women of iron town are, are gonna be singing songs about ashitaka yeah for, of course for they're years sur- to come they're surrounded by lepers clint they're surrounded they by have husbands, though. No, like, they've like, all got husbands and who are dying, who are just dying. And he's a, who I are mean, dying husbands in the woods. that are, you There's know, a lot of, the, he's an idiot, but I love him and I don't know. Which, why, by the way, we haven't talked about the fact that that's Jada Pinkett Smith as <laughs> Toki. Yeah, Toki. <laughs> Toki is, is great. Toki's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Toki and, uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And what was her husband? Is it is it yeah, Koruku? Is it, was Something, that yeah. uh, her husband? I think that's the, right. One of the yeah. guys that one of the guys that uh, Ashitaka, Ashitaka saves, rescues. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do like their relationship, where she's like, "You idiot, I love you." Like that's those are fun. That's just great. How are you ever going to drive the ox now all banged up and mangled? But my little flower. You scared me half to death. Don't you little flower me. I wish the wolves had eaten you. (laughs) Then maybe I could have found a real husband. Sweetness, could we discuss this later? Honestly, can we just talk about uh, what, what, what's the name of the when the in the day he's like that cool ass deer and then he t- the forest spirit forest spirit. Yeah, the forest spirit. No, like the, he becomes the the night walker at the night walker. The, the big, that whole the big form. And he's night- just the, I think you just call it the forest spirit during the day. That whole night walker like establishing sh- like that establishing sequence was incredible. And like I'm always a total sucker too when like we do when there's like hand painted animation and they do translucent effects. So like you can kind of see yeah. through them, but you see the spirit as well. Like it's, it's really hard to not only like artistically design a figure, 
but to ha- to do it in a way where you're completely aware what his form is and it and his shape is within the animated sequence, but also could see like right through it to the forest and trees behind him and like the particle. It's yeah. it's so well done. It that's so cool. No, and uh, yeah, not to go back on what I said earlier about just that looks cool. That's really pretty. The character design is just so yeah, freaking it's cool. It's top. just so pretty and oh, so, yeah. so kind of unsettling at times. That face, those kind of just dead eyes. Looking at him right now. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. it's both gorgeous and intriguing and yet pretty scary. And then it gets pretty scary. And it's, at the it's, end. it's 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 a it's a you know supernatural. Like this is a god. Like I, I think there's something interesting in the idea of of a god being difficult to look at. You know, like he's he's it's a strange strange image for sure um it was like sort of a person face on a on a deer um but anyway, yeah no the character design is incredible i also love the the sound design around the the uh spirit of the forest because for the most part it goes silent and in particular the the sequence where um he revives uh ashitaka where the spirit revives Ashitaka it, and there's some like really profound silence in, in that sequence. Um, it, so it's just like just a focus on the imagery and maybe there's a water droplet sound effect and that's about it. It's actually, I do also like stumbling on little things like that, that it reminds, I think, I think Christopher Nolan uses that trick a bunch. It reminded me of some of the dream sequences in Batman Begins, actually. And then also it rem- prior to uh, this movie, like going back, like Tarkovsky did stuff like that all the time with just like weird, like cool imagery and, you know, mixed with just important silence, you know, like silence that you kind of put your finger on, which is uh, in this movie you know, with the imagery being what it is and how gorgeous it is for at times to just go, just dip to silence. It was great. Those moments really stuck out. I think it just too, just increases, it it heightens the gravity of, of what this creature is. You know, you have all these characters who are revolving around this, around this God. And the second you actually encounter the God, it's like, okay, everybody shut up. You're dealing with real shit now. And the, the other side of the, of the, you know, other side of the coin there is is the you know iron town and you know people are inherently noisy and you know to to then be in the presence of this spirit and it's just silence yeah. like it it makes logical sense and also it makes filmmaking sense because it's you know it, it's either either you highlight things by by being more noisy or you highlight things by taking the noise away you know it's it's great sound design mm. We haven't really talked about the music either. It's a, a Joe Haishashi. I might be saying that wrong, uh, but he does yeah, a lot of the music for for Miyazaki, and it's just per- just perfect. Yeah. His like war score themes, um, but also there's like great use of just little flutes in the forest. These mythical little mm-hmm. subtle flutes. It's it's perfect score. Agreed. I, I got no no qualms with the score. I all of Miyazaki's the music in in his which, yeah, Joe. Uh, Hisashi. Hisashi, yeah. He does it. He does a lot of it. Any other specific beats we want to talk about? I I finally put my finger on what I think I like about Lady Eboshi. Been thinking about this. And now I begin to realize that, like, she's just the mayor of Pittsburgh. You know, just a bunch of lepers and prostitutes, you know, just making some steel. In the middle, in the middle of the Listen, woods, no, you know that that if, no if offense was, to our listeners in Pittsburgh. If there, if that, <laughs> <laughs> as an eastern, as an or, born and raised or northeastern any, Pennsylvania, any listeners, you know, any listeners who might be uh, prostitutes Pitt- or lepers. Yeah. No offense to you Listen, either. In, and to all lepers and prostitutes in Pittsburgh, I, I get it. I get it now. The, you know, and this is this is why I appreciate the conflict of this film because all of this m- movie is is just a burgeoning Pittsburgh just trying to get eke out onto the scene, fight off those fucks in Ohio, and like, and and then the forest is just coming after them. Meanwhile, this, this 
this little bastard from like a town over. He's probably from Philly. Just be like, this is how we do things in the East. Come on. I, and, I <laughs> and I will say, you know, again, not to compliment Dan ever, but this is a great pick for community. This, yeah. this movie is essentially yeah. all about yeah. community and building community and why those communities fight. And it's it again. two communities at, at right, in right, direct right. we've opposition. We've complimented and whose goals are mutually we've complimented exclusive. Dan enough. Like, okay, <laughs> that's enough. The bo- yeah, it is yeah. Enough. It's, it's enough complimenting Dan. Let's just say that there is we don't we don't all three need to weigh in. There's on that a fine. This is a fine um, community of Pittsburgh. Let's talk about movie lists. It's Pittsburgh. <laughs> top ten uses. Do you think top he, ten invocations of Pittsburgh? Side note: Do you, Do you think that like maybe 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 Ashitaki like Ashitaki? How do you say Ashitaka? It? Ashitaka. Yeah. If maybe if they went deer hunter with that and like you know there was just like scenes of him playing like Russian roulette. <laughs> sure. In a in a previous war, and now he has to go defend Pittsburgh. You know that that might make the movie a little little more interesting. Give him a little more riz, which you know. Desperately need. Though we decided he had enough. He does as, 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 as a woman. As a woman, he has risk. You two have decided this. Okay. I refuse to acknowledge it. I listen. I will agree to disagree. I will. Here. Uh, I'll be the the Ashitaka right in the middle of your uh, your riz battle. All right, Clint. Uh, uh, but you gotta, you gotta say that way more lamer though. If you're gonna actually be in the middle here, <laughs> I've tried. Okay. I feel like I've I've been pretty pretty low key this whole time. Um. So this movie, I think, uh, digging back through Cinefix history, it was in the top 10 animated action movies uh, list that we all did. Our colleague, uh, Max Scoville, wrote that one, uh, included Princess Mononoke on there, which I, I'm utterly fine with. I dig I it. Think, it definitely I think the, feels the, like action, the action in this movie is, is a real highlight. This definitely feels like a um, movie. Yeah. We did a uh, we did an eight bit cinema uh, version of Princess Mononoke years ago, uh, but that's about it. I think it's pr- it's probably gotten some shout outs. I know I've used it as B roll more than once. Yeah, that's um, where it should be. but it it hasn't it hasn't gotten a lot of uh, specific uh, call outs. I'm surprised we don't just have a, a Studio Ghibli list we or ranking yet. Um, IGN Are might, there but enough? Cinefix doesn't. I think IGN might. Yeah. 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 That sounds like something uh, like the SEO team or Scott would have cooked up by now. I think I consulted yeah, about we'll, it. Actually. We'll, <laughs> we'll see how much our it. IGN friends yeah. listen to this show. And, and if suddenly we're, <laughs> well, there's a request for a Studio Ghibli yeah. list. Um, <laughs> yeah, they don't. What, what other list is it, does, would this belong on? I mean, there's, I think there's, uh, you know, movies about nature. Um you could could be one. Oh, great! Um, Movies that James Cameron movie. might have stole from for Avatar. Honestly, this fe- this this fits the same. Which also is a big max a big max uh, movie is the Avatar franchise. <laughs> oh, he yeah. does love Avatar. Yeah. That's Ax- right. Max loves. Yeah, Avatar. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, you know, we, I know we have a character intros list, and I specifically brought up San's character intro. I mm-hmm. think that could be on there for sure. Yeah, we could probably revisit that that list we, we did it long enough ago that we could do another one um would we consider yeah mean, i like aboshi would qualify as an antagonist right she would be a top 10 antagonist I, you know the, we've done we've done villains a couple of times we've done a couple of different versions of villains but i do think there's a distinction to be made about antagonists because yeah. there are versions of antagonists not, that aren't she's proper not villain she's right? not villainous she's just she's not an a villain yeah yeah and she's only an antagonist because the movie's titled after a different character. Like, if this that is, is like defending Princess nature. Mononoke was, or The Legend of Ashitaka was a, an option. If this movie had been called The Tragedy of Lady listen, Eboshi, like, listen, she's all of a sudden, she's I, protagonist. Ooh, I, I would want to watch I, that. I would have followed Lady Eboshi to the The death, Maleficent right? of like, the, uh, the Miyazaki-verse? Y- actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have followed her. I would have followed her to the ends of the earth. Like, let's be real. What what, what, what century is this happening? Is, is this like it's, the thir- it's 1300s? Thir- it's somewhere in between thir- I, 13 and 1500. I'm pretty sure. Or there, it's so, one that doesn't exist. All right. Count all no, he said, he said. No, no, no. It's like the, all right. So I got like 700 <laughs> yeah. years I mean, until like Allegra is invented. So like I'm just I'm just allergic to literally everything. All right. As as far as that's on screen in this movie. Yeah. So it's like as far as I'm concerned, yeah. this this lady who's taking in all the lepers, who's taking in all the prostitutes, you know, and burning down the forest. Oh, you'd have fit right in. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would have been great. I could I could be like I can breathe again. 
it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all this clear cut forest yeah. land. All of a sudden, I can breathe. I can breathe. <laughs> you know, I, I've been wondering what was wrong with me the whole time, and it turns out it's nature. I didn't pick this fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> I have bad. I okay, don't know. Saying. Movies. And that color. Yeah, I have bad allergies. And that color is the way that I see like environmentalist <laughs> films. <laughs> we were talking about the movie, a movie list about antagonists. So do you want me to put allergies on that list or. Allegra is, is the what? top 10 hero. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm just like, um, I'm just trying to say like Fern Gully. Like when I was a kid sneezing up a storm during the summer and they're just like, we need to protect your allergens. I was like, I don't know. Let's torf. Oh, wait. What do you say? Let's Should torf? we torf? Uh, yeah, just let me pull up. I'm going to just agree with Clint on all of these. I'm clearly not a Miyazaki fan. And uh, not that I don't like his stuff. Okay. It's just, I'm, it's, it, this is new to me. So I've, uh, we're in the same boat. I think I, I've, I feel like I've, I've certainly seen more Miyazaki than you, but I've never like dug into Miyazaki. I've, I don't have, I don't have a Miyazaki. So what, what you're trying to say is like behind me. In, so in the years, in the years since 2010, when you've seen, had a smartphone and you've watched a Miyazaki and then you subsequently had a poop, you didn't subsequently use your phone during that time to <laughs> Miyazaki anything to look up Miyazaki right. trivia. No, I'm a big poop reader, by the way. You know, I'm not. I, I, <laughs> Who yeah. among us? Yeah. Everybody yeah, is. I know. Yeah. It's not surprising. It. It's, yeah. uh, I get the news. That's not a characteristic <laughs> that's going to that's gonna make you a, a relatable antagonist. Like, we all do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, to that point, you would be. A, that would make you a relatable antagonist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that doesn't mean you're, you're, you're a protagonist at that point. <laughs> like, you're just like us. You're just like the rest of us. Anyway, from turds to torps. Um, <laughs> all right. Here we go. True or false? During, there's actually a lot of really interesting behind the scenes stuff uh, in this movie. Uh, anyway, true or false? Uh, during the production of the English dub, Miyazaki sent Harvey Weinstein his demands via samurai sword. True or false? Uh, by his demands, true. do you mean his in in willingness to not cut a second it, of the film to it not is. yield? Yes, no cuts. Is I this, believe this is, is on the, that samurai sword. This is the movie. Yeah, this is the movie that the no cuts thing yeah. came from. Yeah, right? that's. Yeah, I, but which was actually I, the producer. I don't think it was Miyazaki. If this is a Tayo, yeah, 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 yeah. Point is, is that for this movie, we are aware that there was a no-cut samurai sword sent to Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Somebody sent Harvey Weinstein a samurai sword with right, a note nah, that nah, said if you're no gonna cuts. Try, because Harvey Weinstein wanted to, he wanted to cut something like 40 minutes out of the movie. You know what? I mean, that would have been 40 minutes less I was scrolling on my phone. I'm sorry, when you, yeah, when you, you probably... When you said the tricky Tayo thing, he just wrote in the doc, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We, <laughs> we're on to you, Tayo. We've been, we've been got, Tayo and I. <laughs> we are on to you. <laughs> if that didn't make it very uh, obvious, yes, it is. So false what was, the, what was? The producer sent it. That was the, that was the. Oh, part. it wasn't Miyazaki. It wasn't Miyazaki yeah, himself. That was he, the. He's often been credited for it, but I think he said uh, later, he said, uh, actually, my producer did that. That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. One of the the other guy the other guy that founded Ghibli, um, uh, Suzuki, um, I think Toshiro. Suzuki? Yeah, Tosh Toshiro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway, nailed it. I do love that though. Like that, I actually what I love great. about that no is cuts. just the, the slow. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Damn. But you gotta like <laughs> so close to Dan, it makes you wonder. <laughs> it's one letter yeah. this is not the primary reason but harvey just, weinstein sucks that guy sucks yeah he's <laughs> what, awful. yeah what a turd what a, what a what a shithead uh and i mean you know he's in jail it's, now it's great right that yeah, the story exists yeah yeah good Fuck yeah him. oh yeah uh it's great that that story exists and it's even greater that they were able to follow through on it yeah that there weren't any cuts to it yeah like, it's all it's all great and you can all you could imagine miyazaki like was very much pressured. Like Harvey Weinstein does not take no. Uh, yeah, I imagine there was a note sent back after he got. What it wasn't? Do you think? Um, do, you, do you think but, there is a lot of pressure? Because I mean, like, you think that? The, do you think Miyazaki is making movies on a budget, knowing that they're going to get huge international distribution? Because like, 
I guess like, cause this is a conflict that I have about our movies today is that I do think that like a reason why Hollywood is in the shitter is because movie budgets have gotten so expensive because the studios subsequently expect these things to do well overseas. So thus budget accordingly mm -hmm. and knowing that they need to make money overseas to make their money back. But like, do you think Miyazaki in like 1997, when he is budgeting out princess Mononoke, they are like, well, we needed to do X amount of money in you in the United States in order for us to recoup our, th our, our budget. Or do you think like they're in the black, they're in the black and fuck it, it's the most successful at that time. It's the most successful movie ever released in Japan. If they're not in the black from that and being able to tell like fucking uh, Weinstein to eat shit, which I guess they did because they fucking got a samurai sword, had it engraved and yeah. sent it probably overnighted it <laughs> to L.A. So yeah. And that yeah. asshole. So Weinstein, that asshole was probably proud of it. I'm sure he has it hanging in his cell. <laughs> I don't think they allow that. <laughs> I mean, but also Miyazaki at this point had he had a twenty year track record. Yeah, I mean he's like a Scorsese uh, kind of like guy. He, yeah. yeah, nobody nobody's gonna tell him no. what to do at this point. Mm -hmm. so. God among men. All that to say, false. It was his producer. Yeah. Yes, correct. All right, next. No. All right, next one. All right. All right, Quentin. That's the only one that you're not gonna that you're not gonna slip past me. I think the rest of this I'm gonna good. Good. I, yeah. But, yeah. Uh. Quentin Tarantino was originally selected to adapt the film for American audiences. True or false? I would say true for that. Because, I mean, again, these these are all people that are in the uh, the Weinstein orbit. It's a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say, uh, yeah, I'm going to say false just because Cal said true. I, I don't, I think it was, I think it was gaming all, all along. Right. Don't forget the last one was false. So. There's no rhyme or reason right, to there could be. Our, our tricks. All right. So what is it then? There could be. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Miramax ah. originally asked Quentin Tarantino to take a, a stab at adapting the script, but he passed on the offer and recommended Gaiman instead. Uh, Gaiman had to add dialogue explaining Japanese cultural references that likely wouldn't register with audiences. Uh, he also altered characters so they translated better abroad. Uh, for instance, uh, in the Japanese script, uh, Jigo complains that a bowl of soup tastes like water, which is a cutting insult in Japan, but hardly a sick burn in American standards. So Gaiman made it donkey piss, which I think is donkey a piss. Good yeah, I mean, I also agree, and and, mm -hmm. and that, that and that stays in line because that's not like mo mo modern slang or jargon. You know, donkey yeah. piss donkey is out, piss. has always been donkey piss. Mm -hmm. It's it been around for a while. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe the youths of Alpha might find a more clever term. <laughs> The soup tastes like yeah. Riz. Yeah, there's no contemporary donkey piss is neither contemporary language or modern slang. No, it's I do, pretty pretty <laughs> universal. I do have to wonder though what a what a Tarantino uh, English script for Mononoke would look like. That's an interesting alternate universe. I feel. I, I think can't imagine it would lot. be that. Yeah, go on, Clint. I can't imagine it'd be that much different. Side note: You know what? This was actually probably all happening. Right around the same time uh, Jackie Brown was in production, which is what maybe why he yeah. passed this up, because this would have came out in 97. So, like, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Might have just been too busy. He was, he was, there would have been, uh, I mean, there would have been the scene where Ashi you know, Taka talks about, about his favorite mm -hmm. issue we of did. Silver Surfer or something like that. But we've managed, we've managed to, you know, uh, reference two episodes of this podcast in this, in this, in this video. Three. What, three. What was the This is, this seven is the, seven. Hey, all right. Go back. This is, we did three amigos too. Oh, yeah. Uh, we talked about that one. Yeah. Cinefix. So, I mean, we've done, universe. this is the 25th episode of the show. So, like, no, at it, this point, we. No, it's not. Is it? I think so. We've been, oh, we do this yeah. a lot. Us. I mean, we, we do it once a week. 20. Has it been half a year it's already? Sixth. It's been a while. It's the 26th. And I don't even think Babadook counts as, as one in there. So, it's, it's probably the 26th. It literally has a number. It counts. <laughs> I don't know that it did. It, it I just mean, says it says bonus. You can make the argument it, so. that Three Amigos doesn't count because we fucking booted it. No, it counts though. We did it. But Baba Duke counts. Baba Duke actually survived. It, it ended up counting twice because we had to replace it. We're gonna do uh, another Three Amigos. What other, what other tours we got? Uh, other tour. Uh, true or false? It was the first Japanese animated movie to win Best Animated Picture at the Academy Awards. False. False. It, it was Have the first to win the, the Japanese version of the Academy Awards. Uh, yeah. We can't get... It, it, might, it might be foreign language film, but the uh, animated film was, wasn't until the I, 2000s. It actually wasn't even... It wasn't Jap Japan's uh, selection that year. Oh. 
I thought it was. Um, Plant did even so more it, research. It didn't than show me, up. It didn't didn't show up at the Oscars at all that year. No, yeah, I, 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 I had to do my research for the pedigree section. No, I I thought it was their selection that year, but it just didn't get nominated. Am that, I wrong? That lazy bastard Weinstein. What what was what was he what was he pushing that year that he couldn't that he couldn't do this? I think it was their pick. But it just point didn't is, get nominated. but the Torf though. Torf is false. False. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> It was the first animated movie to win Best Picture at the Japanese Oscars. So that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Minor leagues. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> oh, is that, is that is that the delay? Is that the no. take it easy, Pittsburgh? Oh, is that the is that the <laughs> delay over there? Oh, <laughs> I, I was right, Tayo. Uh, Fr- uh, Princess Mononoke was the Japanese submission to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best oh, okay. Foreign Language Film, but it was not successfully nominated. Oh, what the hell, Academy? Got it. So it was five other five other countries got got in there. Yeah. Okay. Last. What were the movies that year? Hold on. What were the What were the movies foreign that year language? for best for best foreign language film? What would have been in nineteen ninety eight? Read read off read off the next tour, and I'll I'll look that All up. All right. Uh, true or false? The film drew inspiration from the Yugoslav wars and leprosy. Say that again. The film drew inspiration from the Yugoslav wars and leprosy. Yugoslavia wars. Yugoslavian. I'll go leprosy. The film drew inspiration. Yugoslavian leprosy. Yugoslavia, Yugoslavic wars and leprosy. I'll go true on that. I, and I don't know. That sounds. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I can't true. imagine that Tayo's making up either transposing wars or making up fake wars. I I've seen those three D prints. I believe so. Wars. So, you know. I'm going to go true just because I don't know what that war is, but I don't think it's made up. Clint? Yeah, false. <laughs> just because Cal said just, true. Just, to, just, yes, exactly. I'm still trying to work my, my head around the phrasing of the question. Yeah. It reminds me of an old Mitch Hedberg joke about questions like, have you ever tried Skittles or PCP? <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of like we know it's inspired by leprosy. <laughs> yeah, what about the Yugoslavia wars? Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, it is true. Hell. Yeah. Uh, the bloody breakup of go. Yugoslavia had begun while Miyazaki was making Porco Rosso, and it struck him and it stuck him with him as he started to work on his next, next film. The war happened, and I learned that mankind doesn't learn, he told Empire Magazine. Uh, after that, we couldn't go back and make some film like Tiki's Delivery Service. Which again to the levels mm. of Miyazaki that we were talking know. about. So, Get start quick. Mm-hmm. We yeah. we haven't talked about this, but I did read somewhere that this was supposed to be Miyazaki's last film. They're all supposed to be Miyazaki's last film. Is he all one of those guys? He's a serial retirer. Oh, oh, it's a whole thing. Oh, yeah. It's a whole thing. Okay, so uh, in the 1998 Academy Awards, which I'm going to assume are the Academy Awards that, uh, um, were Princess, you looking it up to Princess Mononoke would have been eligible for. I have not heard of any of these films. So same. Uh, one from the Netherlands, one from, from Germany, yeah. one from Brazil, Spain, and Russia got in, but no, no love for Japan that year. No. All, J- right. I'm I'm willing to bet that Princess Mononoke, Mononoke has watched more than all of these movies combined. I feel like we say that year. a lot for good reason on this yeah. show. Like it, the Oscars are not a good barometer. Of a year in film. No, they are. Yeah. They are ship barometer. Occasionally, occasionally they are, but you know, it's a broken clock thing yeah. with them. But yeah, um, that's it for Torf. All right, I'll, I'll Torf Great. out. Great. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you, Torf. Well, look over there. Who's that? Mm. I've never seen you. Mm. Are you selling super donkey piss? No, I think uh, this MVP section is going to be pretty quick. Yep. Who's your MVP? I mean Miyazaki. It's gonna be Miyazaki. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is his movie, starts finish. So if I had to, or Lady Eboshi. That's what I, if I had to pick a, a, a number two, it probably would be Minnie Driver. I think she is so good as Eboshi. Also, we haven't talked about Claire yeah, Danes, the, who I really, dub. I think her song is a little controversial just because it's so yelly. But I like how immature it is. I, I really like Claire Danes. Yeah, but I mean, she's like a child of the forest, right? Yeah, yeah, she's a child. Yeah, yeah. she's literally raised by wolves. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I mean, it, I think it's got to be Miyazaki for literally everything we've already said. I think with I mean, almost every Miyazaki, I think movie, his every- his producer for me, yeah, for me, his his producer gets a gets a close second for that no cuts uh sword 
uh, that gag gets him high in the running. But I think it's uh, it doesn't surpass Miyazaki. Yeah, it's definitely not Harvey Weinstein. No, that guy certainly not. What about uh, Cal? We got time for one more before we get into to where is, where is it ranked? One more segment. What's the segment? If you wouldn't mind. Oh, it's the one that I always introduce. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who would or, who who would Orson Welles play in this film? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, but seriously, Cybertron. So, who would Nicolas Cage play in this film? And I know Clint, you've hinted at it before. You would go Gigo, which is Gigo. Yeah, it's fair. The problem is. He would be he would be great, this and is, I think he would be better than Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, he would. But see, here's the thing: this film was made in 1997, which, by your by your accounts, it would be shortly after the 1996 hit action film. We're talking about The Rock, The Rock, right? And one of the things I have been complaining literally incessantly about for what the last hour and a half, which Alex looks like she's gonna. F- can kill me over which Eyes is clouded with hate yeah which is the complete and utter lack of riz that comes with ashitaka I gotta say Nick and, and i think ashitaka. i think not nicholas cage could bring a level of 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 creativity and uncertainty to ashitaka that frankly billy crudup just failed to bring so <laughs> nicholas cage is ashitaka is my is my choice I, I, I expect more from the role. And here's the thing about what I expect from the role is that I don't know what to expect from the role. Like, I know something's missing, but I can't put my finger on what. And in my mind, Nicolas Cage is that guy that is going to figure out right. what that is. And this is at a moment in Nick Cage's career where he could be that guy. I do not. Yeah, I mean, 97. Yeah. So The Rock was 96. 97 was the Con Air, Con Air. Face-Off yeah, yeah. summer. Yeah. So like... I mean, a lot of memes you came out of that something. summer. Yeah. Well, I do not Nicolas Cage's mean. John Travolta impression would have been a good Ashitaka. <laughs> well, I do not necessarily agree with your criticisms of Ashitaka. I don't think Nicolas Cage would remedy them. You know what I mean? It wouldn't change the inherent... Uh, his lines. Like, his lines are just very straightforward. I think that's why you don't like him necessarily, because he tells you exactly what yeah, he's thinking. You know, but you get Nicolas Cage in the booth... You know, he starts spouting off some shit. He has some, he has some, he, he, he has, he has a lot you, you of You think they'd let, he might, you think, think they'd they let, let him Nick improv. Cage in 1997 go off book on a Miyazaki movie? I think he, if he went off book successfully, they might have. Like, I'm not trying to say that, like, I'm not trying to say that he could just go off book and like whatever he says is God, but I'm just trying to say like in the creative process that is voice acting, he might've said something that Miyazaki could have been like, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm, there's it's a less it's a greater than zero chance. It, I'm, it's not you. it's not zero. I don't know how much how much greater. You know, there's listen. a non-zero chance of that happening. But all right, well, listen, you you let them you let them have the like little. Uh, I'm gonna go with the easy way. Yeah, I I listen. All I'm just trying to say is number one on the call sheet needed some work, so I'm trying to put in a star. I don't it. think Billy Crudup is your issue okay. though. Your crud- your issue is how he's written. So then my so then what you're trying to tell me is my issue is with Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Put Nick swap Nicholas Cage in for Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Maybe I, you know what? I don't disagree with you. Yeah. It's the first time. It's the first time Nick Cage would have been swapped in for a writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just We've never put we him in the Neil Gaiman role. Yeah. Oh, that we could really take this segment to the never next level that. if we just start making him writing writer yeah. director. I agree with you, Clint. I you know, I think you should have drawn <laughs> some of it. Um, produced it. <laughs> All right. Well, where we're running out of time here. So where is it? Uh, where do we have this? Cal, you'd never seen it. Before. Yeah, this ain't anywhere near mine. So list. it's not on your list. Yeah, not going. It's not I didn't going have on it on mine either. Yeah. Well, I, I I didn't have it on mine. Like I say, it's it's not my go to Miyazaki. So. Do you have a Miyazaki? Is on the it list? Dan's fault? Uh, I do. Okay. Is it Dan's fault? Is, did is it you? Dan's fault? Are you? Are Dan, you? No. Nope, are you? Dan are, didn't you have are, are you? Are you slumming with Dan right now? This is a this, this is an, an Alex, Alex solo job. Wow! So how high? So yeah. how high up is this for you? White. Uh, it is my numero twelve. Who single right. handed number twelve? Single handedly muscling. I cannot. I, I don't think I fully expressed how much I love this movie and how complex all the characters are and how beautiful it is. And yes, the themes are not subtly portrayed, but I think they're beautifully portrayed. Well. 
Listen, Ms. 12, do you want the <gasps> honors? I would love. Okay, 12, <laughs> one person's list. Where does 12 get I think, you? I think it gets you in the 70s. It's got to be right I mean, next yeah, to Independence yeah, Day. I'm going to I'm gonna say it's in the 70s. All right. Uh, yeah. Barely 79. Made. Made. 79. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. But on the strength of your 12, oh, you get seven. Gets it up to 79. Good that I got it on the list. I will say. All right. Now. No. I will gladly. I, I, I will gladly. I feel like we got our answer right there. I will mm-hmm. gladly hold this envelope. Maybe if you would have sacrificed Robin Hood, I'd, I'd be a little. I, you more know what? I'm actually going to vote to keep it because I agree with you. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I totally see the parallels here. However, I might vote to vote. I might vote to uh, vacate a Miyazaki later on because, like, if we can't get fucking Cronenberg <laughs> on this list, all right? I, I have to imagine you did. What? Yeah. You didn't? You didn't get a Cronenberg on No, it? no, no. Me and Clint talked about it extensively. That yeah, there we are talked no, about the, there are no, about the you're, you're a one we, director kind of per, like yeah. a one film. I'm not one. I have I have director well, I have directors that have multiple entries on my list. However, someone in the comments of I think it was Seven Samurai or Three Amigos commented if there was a rule that we could only have like a certain amount of films per director. Let me clarify right now that there is not any kind of said rule. However, I do no. take that into account and I'm assuming you guys do too. That was a that was a personal preference yeah. that you used when building your list. Yeah. Right. I do I do try uh, and but spread yeah, no, the love. The, we, it was a real gift of the Magi kind of situation with me and Cal and, and Cronenberg uh, where he went video drum and I went to fly. Um, but because we did that but and we didn't collude for crony, there is we no didn't crony. collude for crony. Right. There's no crony on the actual top one as, as far as we know yeah. so far. That's true. Um, there could always be a strike edition. Yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, or it might be. I mean, listen, we've done twenty whatever of these episodes, and some of them have been not top one hundred. So, so, like, there are seventy other movies on here that you know. So, like, listen, happy to be surprised by it down the road. Yeah, like, um. I'm not going to vote to veto this. I'm assuming neither of you two are. No. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I honestly like. I I wouldn't dream of asking you, Alex, to I, to nix this. As much as I adore Three Amigos, it doesn't. I uh, Three Amigos was not my number twelve. No. Uh, so I I wouldn't wouldn't think of it. This would be like me you asking me to get rid of Independence Day. It's not going to happen. Which I wouldn't. So. Know. Well, we didn't actually have that part. <laughs> exactly. But, you know. I still would have. We're never. all. We're all at this point, 27 whatever episodes into this journey of ours, we're all too good of friends to uh, <laughs> I will, it, to ask people to strike there, to yeah, kill their darlings. It is my favorite film by one of my favorite directors. I love it. Would never, would never sacrifice it. All right. And it is number 79. 79. Mm-hmm. Which I'm I'm totally fine with having having Miyazaki at number 79 no. on our on our top 100. Um but that is going to do it for us this week. So thank you, everybody out there for watching. Uh, thank you, Cal, for watching Princess Mononoke for the first time. Oh, yeah, it was a pleasure. I suppose you technically had to, but also you didn't have to. Like you could have just, you could have just your way I mean, I, I didn't have so. to. I could have scrolled more, but I, you know, I manage, I, like, you know, this is for work. So <laughs> I stopped scrolling. And I like whenever you I took it seriously, whenever, I, yeah, whenever yeah, I felt myself scrolling, I paused the film. You know, I let out, okay. I let out the demon. And then there you go. I resumed. I'm just saying it and took we me all. It took me three hours to watch a two hour and fifteen minute movie. Okay. I'm gonna say well, that's that's, still that's on not you. No, I will not. I will not. Listen, I will not. We'll, we'll need to. We'll need to continue that off. Uh, we'll offline about about that. But uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, again to everybody for joining us and to the spirit of our forest producer Tayo Yakin, the gracious lady who runs this particular Iron Town, technical producer Marian Franzen, and our trusty Great Red Elk DP Jamie Parslow. Uh, thank you to him as well, and the man who just really really chopped the head off this whole thing for his own greedy purposes. Dan the, uh, is welcome to pry some thanks out of my cold dead hand. The leper of Pittsburgh, so, Dan Parkhurst. Leper of Pittsburgh, <laughs> producer Dan. Uh, but next week, Dan's algorithm, uh, you know, just very, very subtly and nimbly moving from from one logical double feature uh, to the next. Uh, we're going to, Miyazaki this week, moving over to Hot Fuzz next week. 
which natural. makes absolute sense. Yeah, very, very natural. Not a gear shift whatsoever <laughs> uh, between those two movies. Well, so, was our, our last uh, episode of Burbs? <laughs> so it was like a very different movie than Princess Yeah, no, we went for it. So we went, we went being there, Princess Mononoke, oh, yeah. Hot Fuzz, <laughs> which is the most, the only sensible uh, triptych of movies to watch when you're 26 episodes into your uh, podcast. Unbelievable. Either way, we'll see you then when we watch Hot Fuzz. In the meantime, stay safe, be good. We'll see you next time.